Hey, Chris with RC Worst here and welcome to Pump Tales. Pump Tales is a segment where we talk about the past, present, and future of pumps and technology within the industry. Today, we're talking about an exciting subject, improving well yield back in the day. Now, it actually might surprise you to know this, but back in the day, people actually used dynamite to improve their well yield. So what we're gonna do is kind of talk about what that did when they blasted dynamite down in a well and kind of the idea behind it. Now, obviously you're sitting there thinking, you know, if you put dynamite down a well, it's gonna cave it in or collapse it or, uh, or something worse, maybe cause a sinkhole. And you're absolutely right. Uh, and that's why they really don't do it much anymore uh, is because it was pretty risky activity uh, blowing things up that deep within the earth. But it's a cool piece of history and I thought I would talk about it today. So let's jump into things. All right, so now it's official. I've written pump tails on the board because that's what we're doing today. So now we're gonna get to it. Now, something that's kind of interesting, you probably know what uh, this is, come show you. I don't know if it's gonna be in focus. Got a handful of bolts, washers, nuts, screws, and nails. Now you say, why do I care about that, Chris? Well, it's because uh, they used to use that along with the dynamite. So they would take a, a stick of dynamite and then they would wrap it in layers of tape and nails and rocks and whatever else that they could find. And a lot of times they would make that wad um, big enough that, that it would just, just fit down the well. Um, and this is more specific to not hand dug wells where you would actually be able to go down and, and drill in and, and put your dynamite like you should as if it was a mine or something. It was a lot, a lot more dangerous what, what they used to do on uh, like a traditional well where you'd have a submersible pump, uh, like four, six or eight inch well. So what they would do is they'd wrap it with a bunch of tape and nails and like I said, anything that they could find just big enough that it would fit down the well because they wanted it as tight to the side of the well as they could because obviously with an explosion, the more compression that you've got, uh, kind of the more energy that, that it's gonna displace. Um, or, I mean, I'm not an explosives expert, but that's the basic fundamentals. Anyways, so they would shove that down the well, they'd set it off in hopes that the nails and shrapnel and everything else would, would penetrate the sides of the well and uh, increase the yield. And they would target either the existing veins and try to make them bigger, and, or they would target uh, new veins that they hadn't yet broken into. So, like I said, this, this was kind of a, a hairy technique, or, or scary technique, it should say, uh, because you never really knew what was gonna happen. Uh, the deeper you get into the earth, generally the, uh, the material starts to get softer in, in some cases, there, there's more porosity. Um, and then you have the immense loading above it. So you can get sinkholes, you can get cave-ins and, and various things like that. But if you're in a situation where you know, back in the 70s or 60s or 50s when this was actually being performed, um, and you just paid a well driller to come out to your house and he spent a whole day drilling a well and it's three, four, five, six hundred feet deep and then he comes to your front door and says, hey sorry Mr. Homeowner, we only got half a gallon a minute. That is not enough to run your house, that's not enough uh, to really do anything with and you're left with that ten, fifteen thousand dollar or whatever it was back in the day bill for drilling that well. So you're stuck with a decision. Do you drill a new well, or do you throw some dynamite down your existing well that you just paid to have drilled in hopes that this gamble might pay off and uh, get you higher yield? So that's kind of how it came about, and that's kind of how people justified it. Um, when you're faced with the decision of, of pay a bunch more money or take a chance, you know, a lot of times people would take a chance, and, and sometimes it would actually pay off. So I've got a couple of diagrams up on the board here uh, that I just put together. For anyone not familiar with how a well recovers, we'll kind of talk about that and it may kind of give you a little bit more of an idea how the explosion actually helped to improve the yield. So this first thing that we've got here, this is, if you imagine it, a, a standard well. Um, now obviously, usually wells are very deep, but I don't have a 500 foot tall whiteboard, so we're gonna have to make do with this. 
So in a well, you'll, you'll start at the surface. We'll say that this, the top of the well here is the surface. Um, and you go down, 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 and then you gradually start to encounter what's known as veins. And these veins oftentimes are running in between uh, the cracks and the rocks and the fissures and really anywhere that it can squeeze through. Um, and oftentimes these veins are supplied by uh, other natural sources. So uh, mountain runoff, spring runoff, winter runoff, you know, whatever the case may be. And it's not uncommon that, that maybe in the spring, this, this particular vein here produces really well, but in the fall, this vein here produces really well. And, and, and anyways, I'm not gonna get too into the dynamics of, of how they can, they can change seasonally, but more or less how they recover overall. So the water trickles down through these veins and goes into the well. And then generally, once the well uh, is filled up, you, you achieve what's known as a static water level. The static water level is where uh, the water level no longer rises naturally and it just sits at. And that's dependent on your supply. So whatever your supply is, wherever the highest source is uh, that you have uh, for your well, in the instance that, that this crack right here is the highest point in the well, the water would only fill up to this line because that's the high, po the high point. So it's gonna equalize. Now, you know, you maybe have heard of artesian wells and things like that in the past or, or, or somewhere along the line. And in that situation, you may have a mountain or something that's supplying the well which then the static water level is gonna be overflowing the top of the well because the source is higher than the well itself. And that's where artesian wells come into play. But anyways, we're talking about low producing wells. So let's say that, you know, in our example, the well driller went out, drilled this beautiful well, 300, 500, 600 feet deep, whatever it is. And uh, it's producing very, very small amounts of water like a half a gallon a minute combined. So the idea, obviously this is gonna fill up very slowly. The idea is they would lower that dynamite down into the well, packed with all that shrapnel, and set it off. And they would hope that that shrapnel would make its way into these veins and possibly into some veins that haven't even been tapped yet and, and improve the yield of the well by either making these uh, cracks bigger or shifting things around and allowing more water flow. Uh, but that was the general idea. Now, this was done in new installations and existing installations or existing wells. Um, it was, it, the dynamite was used in both situations. So you may say, well, if you've already got a well and you've been using it, why would you need to put some dynamite out down there to improve the yield? Maybe you've been on it for 10 years. Well, there's actually two situations where you may need to improve the yield of your well. So let's say you live on a property and all of a sudden want to start raising horses or goats or whatever. Um, obviously your, your water usage is going to go up and you may need more water. So that's an example of needing to increase your yield just based on your lifestyle. Or in a situation, and I've got kind of a zoom in, so imagine just one of these little veins, I've got a little zoom in over here. Imagine a situation where you've got really hard water, a lot of minerals in the water. What can happen over time, let me grab a different color. What can happen over time is you've got this vein that's supplying water to your well. And over, over time, the uh, mineralization can start to build up and form along the, uh, along that fissure or along that uh, vein. And eventually it can actually close it off completely. Or on the other side of things, uh, you could potentially have over time the erosion and so forth dislodges a, a rock or something and all of a sudden maybe this vein that we're talking about is, a, is your best vein and it does 10 gallons a minute where the rest do one or something and, and you just all of a sudden your well's running dry all the time. So rather than call a well driller and drill a whole new well um, because back in the day there was a lot more limitations on how deep they could go and uh, kind of how hard of material they could drill through. So oftentimes they wouldn't try to drill the well again or go deeper, they would drill a new one. And that's very expensive because you're going from the top all the way down to where you were and possibly beyond. So in, in this situation, again, people were willing to take a gamble back in the day. So. Where, where did we get with all of this? 
Well, I just thought that this was a particularly interesting piece of history. And you may say, well, why don't they do that anymore? Well, there's new technologies that are around. They've got things like hydro fracking and improved well drilling technology, uh, better bits, harder material, more force. Um, all of that essentially equates to the, uh, the, the TNT or dynamite method as being obsolete. It's just, it's not safe, it's not predictable uh, in, in this particular situation. And, um, you know, those well drilling rigs nowadays, they can go down very, very, very deep. And oftentimes, if you or find yourself in a situation similar to this one, where the mineralization is, is building up and cutting off the supply to your well, you could call a well driller out and say, hey, you know, I, I'd like you to lower my well an extra 100, 200 feet or, or 50 feet or whatever it might be for your particular area um, in order to uh, get access to new veins and, and improve your water supply overall. And at the same time, these well drilling rigs, as they go down, they're actually forcing water back up out of the well. And the, the process of drilling deeper actually can help to clean the existing veins and improve the yield of the old existing veins as well. Um, so they're adding reservoir space and they're going deeper. But I'm getting off on a tangent on that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe for more great content. Um, we will see you next time. Thank you very much. Leave comments in, in the, the comment place below.